Ah, winter. I do believe it's time to get this thing back in the garage and get some work done to it. So I got some parts and pieces that came in. Let's see if we can get a cold start on this thing and uh, get near the door. Maybe take a broom to it and knock some of the crap off before we bring it in. But then get set up and stand and we'll give her a shot. Sorry for wind noise if there is any. Let's dig our way into the key. We need to be able to hit the choke. Make my way to the carburetor. That's on. And hopefully it's got some juice in it. <laughs> this is I don't think. I think I gotta get a jumper pack. I'll explain why that battery goes dead once I get it inside. Let's see if we can get it inside first. Because that's a new battery. It's already done crapped out. that try to find a place to set that I think another another crank let's get you I gotta let that warm up and uh, bring you back over in the garage. He's purring like a kitten though. Whatever we can get off out here doesn't end up on the floor in the garage. You know? And back in and frozen still. I think I'm gonna go let this thing kind of thaw out and come up to temp for a little bit. Go and grab a cup of coffee. Not that that matters to you guys. But uh, we'll let that, uh, I don't know, maybe hit it with the air gun, knock some of the snow off too. But some of the things we're gonna go take care of on this. One is the battery keeps going dead. It's on a charger now. And the reason why it kind of keeps going dead is it has a parasitic draw. Parasitic draw is something that draws a little bit of power over a long period of time. Real common on a car is uh, like your car stereo, the memory in your car stereo, something like that. An alarm system has a tendency to do that. This one has one too. And that is why I ended up putting this switch, this lockout switch, where the power, the main power, just gets disconnected and it isolates the battery from having that being an issue when it's parked for a long period. And uh, that was okay until the switch went bad. The switch is no good. I do have another one in order. It's coming on the slow boat from China. When I get it, I'll get it. Not that big of a deal to put in there. Might even come today. Who knows? Uh, but my issue, I do believe, is the winch. Guys, just didn't even realize it had a winch on it. But yeah, there's a winch tucked underneath the front. But the winch has a... Um, it's a Harbor Freight winch. They got real popular uh, five, six years ago with the, the stupid remote control for them. And the old school had just a big heavy cable, um, big heavy cable going to a controller and then back to the uh, uh, winch motor. And again, those did not have that issue. These, and this is just as my assumption was what it's happening is it's always looking for a signal from the remote. And so something in here elect electronically stays on all the time and that slowly runs the battery down. And I do believe I think that is what is happening with that. So we have one of the good old school style 
winch controls that just goes right to the winch motor. Nice heavy cables and the other two go right to the battery. It goes, it goes, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I should probably put a fuse in that line too. Other issue is, that we're gonna work on, the reason why the bed is in the down position is because switch gun gave up the ghost. So uh, we have a new switch with a little rubber booty over it so it will not happen next time water getting in that too. So we're gonna try to fix that. Um, and other thing is when the bed tries to go and dump down, the hydraulic pump is not operating correctly. So we may take that apart and see how that does. But for now, I'm gonna go in, warm up, my hands are freezing, let this thing kind of thaw out, get the battery to charge up, and we'll have at her. One thing I wanna get on is uh, the switch for the dump bed up and down. And it is uh, a bit annoying problem to have. So I wanna to try to check, tackle that first, get that out of the way. Now we got just nothing. I don't know if we lost power going to it or if the switch itself is no good. So that is only half of the equation. What else do we got? I think it's got a resist, a uh, fuse built in. Yeah, so that's a fuse. That's power coming in. Can we, what do we have to do? We just have to put 12 volts down to either one of those and it should go one way or the other. Why don't we try cheating a little bit and uh, let's go prod that guy. And we get nothing. So I wonder if we lost 12 volts maybe coming over to here. Yeah, we get nothing. Let's try the other side of it. Yeah. We go grab a test light. We'll see if we got 12 volts still coming over here. And if not, we'll chase it back. I still got my test light hooked up to the, right to the negative of the battery. And I went across the battery to make sure the light was still working. I haven't tried this yet. Let's see. We got nothing coming back here. So we lost the power source coming in. So it's more than the switch. I do know the switch is bad too though. But let me get the top of the seat off because we're gonna wanna get in there for the pump anyway. And we'll see where that wire got lost. I popped that seat off and which color wire are we looking for? We are looking for this one. So this one we wanna see where it gave up the ghost. Could be that guy. Could be the fact that that guy and that guy's not connected. Do you think that's your problem? You know what happened, the switch um, got ripped out, fell out, and it was kind of like rubbing on the tire a little bit when I was trail riding. And I have a feeling that uh, it just pulled off, the, yanked on it from there. So that, that was easy find. All right, let me go patch that and uh, we'll get a new switch over there. We'll start wiring it. And little switch guts. We're gonna get into what, who, how, where, and when, how they tick, that kind of thing. All right, so the switch itself on this pump, is essentially there's two different things that uh, I'm trying to find how I want to break this down. Um, we're just going to go for instance of this setup and what it's doing because there's so many variables, you know, power wise. But this is a DC motor that switches direction to switch its um, its pumping. I think it switches direction. I'm not sure of that. But essentially, what's happening is on this one. I got to get the camera from stop wiggling. Stop. On this one, power comes in the center and it's going to exit out one of these two legs back to the motor. And this is what's called a momentary switch. And it's a double pull, double throw. I'll explain all that. All right. Momentary means if you let go of it, it returns to its neutral or open position. Hence, momentary. No matter what you do. So, this is you know a convertible top. You don't want to just flip the switch and let the top do its thing and crush its way down into no man's land. You want to control it on older cars. So, this is uh, about the same setup. Actually, it is because that's what's uh, in here is a convertible um, pump and uh, cylinders, actually. So, momentary when you flick the switch this way, uh, internally, we'll say this circuit gets completed and this circuit gets completed. They're isolated from each other. They, this one and this one pass through, this one and this one pass through. Go back to neutral, there's only whatever you have on these two legs. I hit you again. Flip it the other way, 
same thing happens on this end. This path gets completed, this path gets completed. On this one, it only is uh, breaking out the power lead and switching directions on the power lead. If it had, like some of them, like the winch probably is when we get up to there, it power comes into the motor. And again, for the motor to go the opposite direction, it needs positive and negative. To, to grab the other two ends and spin it the other direction. But you can't introduce any of these anytime you're switching back and forth and you want them both kind of cut off when they're not being in use. So what would happen is this would be, say we'll call this your positive, this your negative. Again, they're isolated from each other. There's no, nothing. Just two, there's two separate switches. Let's think of it that way. All right. So if you click it one direction and you have positive and negative here, it makes positive if you send this out to positive and negative on the pump it'll go one direction but if you take two jumpers and you come across and you were to flip them over onto here following me so that is now going to there and that's going to there essentially uh what do we call it this positive right this is positive down here when you go over to here this is going to be the negative and this is going to be the positive so when you flip it the other direction the other direction this is open nothing's happening over here so there's just open wires and these two get power going the opposite direction and they also continue out to the pump and uh, we'll just make the pump spin the other way so that's how you can make a pump go forward and backwards with that now this one only uses hey, again. this one only uses one side so whatever's happening in the motor is taking care of other parts of it or it's got two wine i just don't know uh so we're going to come in with the positive here and let uh, one leg go out here, it'll be isolated, and then we flip the other direction, it comes, goes out there to be isolated. But we gotta do one more thing with that. Because like anything with an electric pump or electric motor can draw a lot of power, especially if you stall them out, you know, if you start overdoing it, like a winch, you know, a winch is freewheel, it's not drawing that much. You uh, start putting a load on the winch and getting hot, it's getting hot, it's gonna start drawing a lot. So you gotta have some kind of fuse in the middle of that, and that's what this is, these guys are. These are uh, resettable fuses, and they're in the upper uh, amp ratings. Um, I think what else you use them on, like an RV. You know, you, you put your plug. Say if you got a, a battery maintainer lug on your um, your uh, car trailer or your brake controller, you want to put one of these in there too. So if something gets drawn too much, but what it does. So say if this is a 30 amp fuse, at 30 amps it sees that. I think it's a little higher than that actually. Um, it trips the breaker, then um, it cools off and it'll reset itself so it'll be ready to back go. It's not like you lose that circuit and it's dead. They're resettable fuses. So these go in line with them and anytime you're kind of overdoing it or something, yeah, especially with like, you know, shoddy wiring on this thing, it stops rubbing here and there. If something does hit it, um, it'll just keep hitting the fuse and, and keep disconnecting the circuit uh, if it's got a, you know, a direct, uh, direct short in some of the wiring. I guess I should finish that thought too. It would make sense, wouldn't it? Anyway, so what's going to happen is on the fuse, this is just going to be from the power coming from the battery or the machine. The hot lead coming in is going to go through here, out this leg, and I'm just going to connect this leg to the middle. So the power is just going to run, you know, bing through there, through there, into the middle circuit. That's how it's going to be uh, connected. I'm not sure I'm going to mount it to the other one. The other one had a, a better lug system. This one doesn't have it. All right, so we got that kind of put back together. Everything's just kind of laying on top. And you guys can bust my balls for using butt connectors, but oh well. So this is where the wire was pulled apart before. And right below that is the starter relay. I don't know if you can see it. And then you can see the big cable coming from the battery to up to here. And that is directly connected into there. So uh, I put the fuse here because if anything happens downstream, it's all protected now. So if this wire chafes into the frame and cuts it, you know, that breaker will come on. And again, these are reset. They reset. Probably takes about a minute for it to cool off and it just clicks shut again and it'll work again, depending on how hot it got. So that wire is running back to the switch in the center. And then the two out, yellow and red, going uh, to the pump right there. And then we got to get into that issue. So this should, it does. At least spin the pump. That's up. And that's down. And you can see where like, it wants to try to go. 
Oh, that's up. Maybe the pump is okay. <laughs> I was gonna tear into that. It was uh, having a problem from that up position getting started to pull itself down. Let's see how much snot it has. A lot. Now it should be latched shut. Bing! There you go. Alright. Well, that'll make my job easier. I have a feeling it's going to act back up again, though. Let's see. Or the secret is to run it backwards and bog it down, then go the other way. Yeah, it just sounds kind of funny when it gets there, doesn't it? That's all that we dumped. It is full. That's not the issue. Well, good. Problem solved. Right, and that's the case. I'm going to go take the switches and uh, hook all that stuff back up, put some tie wraps on them, and tuck them away, right, put some tape around that, put a little bit of dielectric grease on my connections, and uh, let's go where you want to get on to now, the uh, winch. We'll work on that winch setup. She no fit in her hole. Yeah. Someone was asking what this was. It's called, it's called a uh, stepper bit. That's what I call it anyway. And we're going to have to put that switch in. So we're going to want it like that. We're going to want yellow. Oh. So stepper bit does exactly what it says. It has steps on it. And it just keeps opening the sides little by little. It's great for like sheet metal-y stuff. Big stuff, eh. There we go, now we're up and in. So we'll get set that up and uh, bolt it in. But uh, Harbor Freight sells those. They're cheap, you can get like a three pack set, three different sizes. And I wanna say it's like 12 bucks. Um, they cost you, you probably can get them online too, but uh, they're good for opening up like sheet metal holes. They burn up fairly quickly though, so I buy a couple of sets that are cheap enough in the, in, when, you, when you cook one, you just throw it away, because that aggravates you. You'll be, you'll be drilling through, <laughs> and you get to the one that you burned up, and you're, you're sitting there smoking it and trying to get to the next one. Just throw it away. I threw some tie wraps on there. I figured I'd take a second and just show you what the actual system, what it's doing and where it's going, what it was made out of first. Before this happens again, this is a little booty. A little switch prophylactic and that should screw out right on there and now the weather goes down and around instead of down in inside the switch all right so that's all hooked up we're now forward is forward backwards backwards how's that I don't think you can write a sign on it anymore the pump is right here and again this is a Actually, I think it is out of the Plymouth uh, convertible that I had on the side over here, parts car. And uh, this is the pump motor from it. And I think the lift cylinders were either, either out of that convertible also, or they are out of a like a 71 Mustang. Um, I had two of those with like parts that were left over and it is the mix of the two of them. So let's put it that way. So again, this pump is set up where it's got just a ground lug grounding the main part of the pump and then it has just two wires coming out of it and uh, whichever way you put power to those is the which way uh, whichever wire receives power is the direction it's going to spin so whatever is done is done internally there and then you have hydraulic lines coming out on one side hydraulic lines coming out on the other side and they split off and go to uh, bolt like so this guy is doing both top cylinders feeding. This guy is feeding both of the bottom cylinders. And I couldn't cut those, so I had to kind of run them around, like back up and around the frame again, because they're, the ends that were on them, I didn't want to take the crimps apart. Those guys. But I made out, they are on there. And then I had to make it so the cylinders can pivot. So I had to come up with cobbling of sorts that was like a nut with another nut with a bolt going through it 
into the uh, bushing. I remember I took the ends of the bolts and put them on the lathe and took the threads off and made them so they fit nice and smooth inside those nylon bushings. And then again, just built whatever supports needed, but they're able to rock back and forth. So you had to make sure you had room on the bottom. Also. What's that guy? This bed is a wheel horse um, tow behind trailer for a garden tractor. And uh, I think the wheels are kind of messed up on it. So I just took all the parts from it, cut it, adapted it, and used, uh, moved a pivot into the center of it so that it really doesn't seem that much weight. You know what I mean? Instead of it picking up off the back, it picks up off the middle. If the thing is full, it's not working so much. Um, lifting actually so much material because the stuff that's already in it kind of cancels itself out but it's got more than enough snot it'll uh i mean you stack stuff on the front of it rocks or whatever it's still gonna dump it, it still goes so uh, that's that i think we're okay the tire wraps are on there again goober up some of the ends of the switches this one is right down by the end here and it's where it picks up power and i just tie wrapped it to the body i'm not going to cover it with tape or anything i think it's in uh out of harm's way enough nothing's close to it and uh, again, now everything's protected down line. If something shorts out, that'll kick out. Right. <laughs> and why stop there? I have more rambling in me. You want to see the bed? Again, so the bed is the um, trailer, the tow behind trailer, a little garden trailer. It would have little, little tires on each side of it. And it did dump. That's the same handle from it. Uh, I had a tongue that went out the center of it. That handle mechanism was mounted in the middle reach behind you uh, i modified it with some rebar to get more capacity out of it because it really wasn't all that big so this was the uh the wife's uh, garden stakes <laughs> every year she needs new ones i don't know why they had the right look to them I, they were nice and rusty so i kind of used them i don't think i was really that concerned they were just nice and rusty uh cut and fabricated them up it's got a like a double step on it every once in a while you can see where there's a there's a v there and that just makes it super strong it's just part of the uh the structure it actually can like pull from here if i'm towing a garden tractor i take two of these straps and i cross them and i, I grab the front beam of the the tractor and i the, the two button uh, the two ratchet straps one goes to this side one goes to that side and i just lift the bed up and it's like a little wrecker it'll just pick up the the uh, garden tractor from behind it and uh tow it away someday if uh <laughs> when I'm rescuing Brian, <laughs> I'll show it on video. And let's look into that winch situation. All right, so one of these leads here, and then probably one from the other side. Both run down to a control box on top of the winch. And that control box has a wireless receiver, transmitter, and, uh, a receiver, and then there's a transmitter that you... Uh, hold your hand that you hit you know for your garage door opener or whatever your remote same idea not a big fan of them because it seems like every time i got one they worked for about 30 days and then they would crap out and uh, this one was no different but it was actually getting it was hard to find any that um still had the old mechanical uh, controllers on it but that's what we're going to go do to this one uh this is crap i hate it i want it gone uh it's got two wires coming down going here they are going into the controller and then that, whatever decides to tell what direction to put power to the winch to have that go forward in reverse. We're gonna bypass all that crap and uh, just put a hand controller on it that has um, an up and a down button and they go two wires to the battery and two wires to here. And, uh, pretty uh, tough and stout uh, setup. So before I wanna do that, I do wanna come over, who knows what con condition this winch is in, again, it's been sitting here forever, so it may be frozen up. It could be full of water. It could be, you know, not even worth our time on it. So let's get a jumper pack, and we'll connect to the leads, and we'll see, make sure that this still does something. I don't know which direction it's going to do what, so we're just going to hook power to it. So let's get one on that side. Those ends look like crap, too. It makes noise. Let's see if I can see the spool. I think that's going the right direction. Can't tell. 
We're gonna find out. <laughs> the mine's right up, right? Yeah, wrong way. 50-50 shot. It was gonna go the wrong way. Okay, it still works, so we're gonna still move forward. Got one of those uh, wires up. Let me the other one. I ordered a new camera today. You wanna know why I ordered a new camera today? That's why. <laughs> I ordered a different style too. The, uh, it's still can. This is a Canon power shot that we have. And the one that I ordered has a much better uh, zoom on it, mechanical and electrical. Oh, come on, please. I'm grabbing the back side of that so that the stud doesn't spin out of the body. When that happens, you're on a cheap winch here. Why don't you just get another winch? Angry on both sides. Anyway, so the new camera. New use, it's not even new. Let's see how that works out. See if it improves our zooming capacity. This one always seems to crap out. Let's zoom you back out, so I, mean, I could show you. Let's try it anyway. Batteries flashing. It's just falling apart. Alright. So inside here, what we gotta do to get in here? Can we just pop that off now? Got a bunch of little screws. I'll shoot open that anyway because we want to see what the parasitic drain culprit is. Let me get you guys set up a new battery on you. Let me get the screws out of there and we'll crack that coconut. And let's go see. You got the screws out of it. There you go. So here's your little receiver with its antenna. that is and then it's got two relays for switching which way the power goes out to the motor you know so it's gonna have um, essentially it's, it's the double pole double throw switch all over again but just using two relays so it's using you know that part of it problem is this usually fails over time and this I believe draws a little bit of power all the time. I'm not positive of that, but I'm suspecting that that is our uh, issue is that this thing slowly over time just keeps taking power, keeps taking power, looking, looking, looking for a signal and eventually kills your battery. So that's why I put the, the big toggle switch in to stop that from happening. But then that failed and uh, <laughs> we wired it directly and then it killed the battery again. So I'm going to go take these two leads right here, go up to the battery. I'm going to get rid of them and I'll get the switch and we'll start hooking the switch up. Need I say it? Those who feel like they're at the dentist office, I'm going to get you Novocaine. Let's get them so that we don't get a bunch of resistance. Come back with some either dielectric or just regular grease. Uh, 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 Clean. So that pile of crap is replaced by this is not so pile of crap. And it's really simple what the hookup is too. It's just gonna have two that say battery. You can see that. So that's, that's, and then the other two go to the uh, motor. And it's a 50-50 which way these go. I'm not sure what's plus and minus again on that. So we'll just hook them up. If the button that says reel out, reels out, good. If not, we just swap those two locations. And that's what's gonna happen. We get those back on there. And then we'll try it out. All right. <laughs> I won one. It's going the right direction. Good. That should be able to get closed. 
and we can take this guy and I'm probably gonna do something bungee-ish to the front of it here somewhere. That's in front of the light. Who knows? <laughs> That's going somewhere. All right, so I'm gonna goober up the ends on here. I'm gonna leave this alone on the battery for now because this is gonna come apart once the switch comes in in a couple of days this is coming out of here and this is getting redone again anyway so i don't want to deal with all that crap on my fingers or it's going to be three years later when that's all screwed up and i didn't do it because i never put the switch in <laughs> one of those two is going to happen now what fun would it be if we don't test it i should probably stand on this side Someone's asking about headlights. Headlights. So it's got the original switch is still hooked up here and it had like a high beam, low beam. So it's got that one. And then for the low is the other one over there. But the only problem is one of the bulbs are out. Oh yeah. And they're uh you know one of the old school style ones. I gotta look one of those up, a little 12 volt tiny headlight, and it'll take even if I care to fix it. Here of, of that issue. Well, that's it guys. I got some other stuff I need to work on. So I figured I'd try to do a little bit of wrenching on this anyway. And I uh, still need to get rid of that switch. Get a new one in there. Headlight bulb. The front brakes don't work. Uh, the, the back does. And when it's in four wheel drive, of course, you're breaking all the wheels. But I think I got to get a massive cylinder for this. Or I might even have one out back. I think that was what the failure was on that. I never got to fixing that. I think we're okay. Put my sticker back on. I hit it with a pressure washer at the car wash and I blew off the, the wheel horse. I'll get that back on before the end of the evening. And I should be ready for some more romp. And someone's saying I put a skid pan underneath it. The whole thing's a skid pan. I made the whole thing as one. You could drag that bottom of that over any log you want. Not gonna hurt anything. Much. Can't be going out without his tramp stamp, you know.